Hi all, welcome to Frank Banket Podcast, a knowledge sharing platform for banking, finance and related technologies. This episode is going to be very interesting. We are going to discuss about artificial intelligence. I have a special guest here, Shiva, CTO and co-founder of Presigns. I previously has worked with KPMG, Infosys and AAG. He is also a IIT IIM alumni. Let me start with the basic question about filtering the jargon from the reality. How do we differentiate between uh, big data analytics, artificial intelligence and machine learning? Sure, that's a very interesting question. Uh, so big data is really uh, large volumes of data coming in at high speed or velocity and in high variety. For example, okay. I mean you have transaction data, you have uh, uh, unstructured data, text data, all of that coming in. And at the same time, it also needs to be verified and validated okay. and to derive business value. Okay. Analytics is something that we do uh, typically to generate quick insights. For example, if you want to know why today's revenue dropped from yesterday, so that is analytics. Okay. Artificial intelligence is really a whole gamut of technologies which, is, uh, which talks about how machines can be as smart as humans. Okay. Machine learning actually is a subset of artificial intelligence where we uh, deploy mathematical models uh, which represent real world scenarios, for example, uh, uh, recommender systems or forecasts, okay. which learn on the basis of new data coming in. So AI typically encompasses machine learning and other things like deep learning, natural language processing, etc. Okay. There is a lot of noise uh, about AI changing the landscape of the industries. Okay. What are the real use cases? within banking where AI can make a real impact. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you see the history of banking, a lot of data and statistics and models have been used right from the very beginning. For example, credit scoring models, how to calculate or forecast interest rates for the future. All of this has been used in banking for a long, long time. And if you take a customer journey, right, right from customer onboarding, even before onboarding in terms of campaign management or marketing, uh, then uh, credit scoring, risk analytics, anomaly detection uh, of transaction data, customer service. These are all areas where AI can be used and is being actively used. Okay, okay. Sounds good. Uh, Shiva, where are we in terms of uh, this maturity of these technologies? For example, chatbots. Still, I feel that it has not been evolved fully. Yeah, rightly said, Bala. Uh, definitely, it is a maturing and evolving field. And... Uh, uh, just deploying chatbots is definitely not enough. Uh, all of it needs to be anchored in real data of the enterprise policies, all of that, right? So that is that is very important. On the same hand, uh, there are machine learning models uh, around risk analytics, propensity modeling. These are all fairly mature and are widely being used in the uh, enterprise. So of course, I mean, uh, I would say, AI is generative AI, machine learning, all these are like a continuum of evolving technologies and as and when these technologies mature, you uh, adopt them more and more. Okay. Okay. So, uh, let me get into a little bit technical. Can you throw some lights on these various kinds of standard algorithms that seems to be evolving fast? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are a lot of deep learning and machine learning algorithms which have evolved uh, in the last few years, for example, XGBoost is uh, uh, used to uh, create hyper-personalized recommendations. Uh, Random Forest is used for uh, a lot of churn modeling nowadays, understanding churn patterns. Uh, uh, algorithms like LSTM are being used for doing heavy-duty forecasting, which consider various kind of data parameters. So obviously, I mean, as the technology matures, more models are new, newer models are coming in, and uh, uh, really making an impact to the business. Okay. Okay. Shiva, uh, what kind of uh, uh, tools or hardware required for uh, artificial intelligence implementation, and uh, do you see some limitations that may need to be bridged for the wider adoption? So if you see really. Uh, uh, what is behind the AI adoption nowadays uh, is the actually easy availability of hardware in the form of cloud servers. Okay. 
Okay. So, if you see uh, the era from uh, uh, COVID times and uh, even slightly earlier, a lot of cloud adoption has happened. Uh, so, with that, the hardware is more readily available. Of course, okay. if you are looking at very specialized use cases like running large foundation models and etc., you definitely need more and more specialized uh, hardware and GPU machines. But for the most use cases, there are a lot of hardware uh, that is available. Uh, which is which can be deployed on the cloud very easily and then pilots can be done very easily without actually purchasing a lot of infrastructure. And uh, from a tools perspective, uh, there are a lot of frameworks that have been uh, adopted from uh, Google and Meta which have been open sourced. Uh, so if you see Python is the default language for machine learning and uh, 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 modeling etc. now. So definitely, I mean, the open source frameworks from Google and Meta have helped in the AI adoption in a la large way. Okay. okay. Shiva, uh, what are the challenges and preconditions for any bank before they implement any kind of uh, AI interventions? So one of the basic things uh, for machine learning models or AI systems to work is the availability of data. Uh, so uh, the right data foundation has to be available. And uh, because uh, the outcome or the output that you get from machine learning models is largely dependent on the data sets because you need to train the model, you need to validate the model before you actually start using it. So uh, adequate data preparation is extremely necessary. And then also business ownership I mean, in terms of understanding the uh, uh, real world use cases, working with the uh, data science team to develop uh, some of these uh, uh, models in a more effective and business uh, friendly manner is absolutely necessary. Okay. Okay. Siva, uh, so data preparation seems to be a big precondition Correct. and some of these could be a legacy systems Correct. and how do we handle this? Yeah. So uh, one of the uh, uh, typical use cases for machine learning deployment of large mach machine learning models is the availability of data from uh, heterogeneous systems and sources. Uh, so, uh, with the newer data platforms coming in, which are uh, uh, which can handle both structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data uh, coming in from multiple source systems, even external to the organization. So, the process has become a little more easier. So, we used uh, techniques like ELT and ETL to bring data from legacy systems. And there are, uh, in, especially in uh, banking and financial services, we see a lot of uh, document data which needs to be uh, uh, run through optical characteristic recognition, natural language processing uh, uh, techniques to really bring it into a form that is usable by machine learning models. Yeah. So uh, all those technologies have helped in a big way. And of course, the data platforms need to be built, as you said, I mean, the right data preparation is okay. needed. And one more key aspect is the business ownership of data. Okay. So the data governance mechanisms have to be really robust and very strong. For example, uh, the CRM data or the sales data will have to be uh, owned by the uh, sales team rather than the IT team because uh, in order for the data to be clean, in order to run if more effective campaigns, you need very clean data from a customer or a prospect perspective. So that needs to be owned by the business team. So appropriate data governance mechanism is also absolutely necessary. Okay. Okay. Shiva, uh, some, one more a very important uh, point that I would like to discuss with you. See, if you look at the smaller banks, fintechs, lending fintechs, uh, for all these kind of uh, 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 companies, it's very challenging for them to implement uh, these kind of artificial intelligence. See, first one is that skill set. Second one is capital constraints. So how do you see this? Yeah, uh, there is capital constraint problem has been somewhat solved by the availability of cloud technologies because you can okay. do really uh, small pilots and then before you actually scale. Uh, skill sets, of course, uh, uh, that is a challenge for any small firm. Uh, but uh, what we have seen is, I mean, some of the uh, uh, leading scientists, data scientists or technologists are uh, there in the uh, financial services world uh, comparable to Silicon Valley uh, uh, organizations as well. So definitely, I mean, which means that the challenges and problems that uh, banks and financial institutions solve are really interesting. Okay. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I think it is a, a, a question of maturity. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, the uh, organization really needs to evaluate where these skill sets are required. Maybe it is a combination of a build and uh, uh, taking some external help kind of an approach. I mean, I, I would say, I mean, that is sort of the approach that most organizations that I have seen are adopting. Okay. Shiva, uh, we talked about uh, chatbot earlier, correct? So are there more use cases uh, for generative AI in banking? Absolutely, absolutely. So generative AI technologies uh, and large language models uh, have really come into the fore uh, uh, demonstrating fluency, uh, high context, uh, uh, which can be utilized across a variety of uh, use cases. For example, uh, uh, contracting and knowledge management is a very important use case where uh, banks uh, deal with a lot of documents, a lot of uh, legalese. So uh, it's uh, using generative AI is extremely effective in those use cases. Marketing, hyper-personalized campaigns, uh, creating quick uh, campaigns for A-B testing across various demographic groups. So that is again an area where generative AI can be used very effectively. Uh, customer service, uh, not just chatbots, but also uh, support tools which are effective for service agents to engage and service customers be better by giving a holistic perspective of uh, the issue, the customer and uh, the product that the bank is trying to sell or offer to the customers is also an important area. So there are across the customer journey, uh, there are aspects where generative AI technologies can be used. Okay. Okay. Shiva, many are highlighting the risks that AI may present, including Elon Musk. So do you see such kind of risk? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as with any new technology, uh, the uh, risks need to be mitigated and managed. Uh, so one of the uh, use cases that keeps uh, everybody awake is the hallucination of generative AI models. Uh, so uh, obviously, I mean, uh, a lot of it has to do with how the model is built and validated. Uh, so how do you anchor it with the right set of uh, organization data? Then there are aspects like explainability of models that need to be managed. For example, a relationship manager should be able to broadly explain why the model is suggesting uh, this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, aspect of uh, the portfolio to the customer, right? So the explainability is very important. For example, I mean, uh, you might have read about a, a large American airlines uh, losing a lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. correct. Uh, so there was a, a generative AI or chatbot which was deployed to answer some queries for customers and it really did not take into account the airline's policy around cancellation. Uh, so, uh, while uh, it answered uh, something which is not as per the airline's policy, when the airlines uh, sort of contested that fact, uh, they were not allowed to contest because they did not put effective guardrails around that system that had they had deployed on the website. Okay. And uh, also handling various uh, uh, different sort of regulations around data privacy, and controls, that is also very important. For example, Europe has a different set of regulations of usage of data. US has a different set of regulations. India or Asia has a different set of regulations. So uh, the systems that are being built have to really adhere to some of these regulations. And of course, uh, the all-encompassing threat around cybersecurity is always there. So these systems also need to really take care of some of these aspects of cybersecurity uh, and data threats that are uh, looming for any uh, uh, technology adoption as well. So uh, all this needs to be managed more effectively uh, and uh, uh, guardrails need to be put. So that's where uh, a lot of the work uh, uh, I believe is going to happen as we uh, go into this journey of AI and uh, machine learning. Thank you, Shiva. Viewers, I'm sure you all would have enjoyed the insights on artificial intelligence. Do like, comment and share. Thank you all.